that you have me here. So last time I think I went right after Brother Jason, and we were joking last time, last week, and I said, well, I sure hope that I don't have to go after you again. And here I am. So anyway, if you can please pray for Pastor. He's not feeling well, had a fever. So pray for Pastor and Riley. For all those that reached out to me this week, I'm very thankful. It was such an encouragement. Uh, I'm standing in front of you, which is better than what I was doing on Wednesday. So uh, there's improvement. Well, let's go, let's go ahead and pray. Uh, ask God to do something this morning and uh, touch our lives, and then we'll get in, right into the lesson. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, the time to be in your house. Lord, to worship and praise you. Lord, I pray that you just uh, be with me. Have me uh, bring the words that you want me to say this morning. Lord, just calm my nerves so that I can bring your message clearly. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to just praise you, Lord. Lord, and I just thank you for everyone that's here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Before I kick it off, we do have Lake Texoma Baptist Youth Camp with us, so we want to say welcome to all those that are here. And then uh, Brother James Ello, he's going to uh, preach this morning, so we're looking forward to that. So pastor called me yesterday. He says, hey, can you prepare Sunday school? I don't think I'm going to be there. I said, sure. So uh, I was like, it's probably not going to be fully original. So I did take a lot of the um, Journey Into series by Brother uh, Tommy Higgle. So uh, we're going to be using a, a lot of that this morning. So we're going to talk about becoming wise. So we'll be jumping around from Kings, Proverbs, and James. So be ready to turn with me this morning. And I intentionally didn't go ahead and market my Bible so that I can turn with you and we can all flip the pages together. So as we talk about becoming wise, I told you the passages we're going to be in, but you would automatically assume we're probably going to go to Proverbs a lot. Uh, and there's a reason for that. So Proverbs is written by Solomon and we're going to turn now to 1 Kings 3. We're going to read a little bit of kind of about the start of where Solomon got his wisdom. So if you'll just turn with me, 1 Kings 3. So we'll start in verse... Uh, Let's go, I like to go back a little bit to get some more context. We'll go 1 through probably 10. So in 1 Kings 3, it says, And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter, and brought her into the city of David. And so he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to there, for that was the great high place. A thousand, sin, thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Here's the verse we're really going to uh, first talk about. So in verse 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this? Thy so a great people, and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. I'll stop right there for now. So here you see kind of the start of where Solomon got his wisdom. The, the Lord comes to 
Solomon in a dream, and then Solomon uh, asks for wisdom. So this is not a selfish request at all, uh, because Solomon's not asking for money, fame, fortune, power, long life, any of those things. Um, so let's continue to read now. We'll read down to verse 12. So starting in uh, verse 10 again, And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, hast not asked thyself for long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So you see that God grants that. Now we're going to turn to Proverbs. Um, go ahead and turn to Proverbs, and then we'll uh, kind of turn around. We'll be in like 2, 3, and uh, several other chapters. But the book of Proverbs, written by Solomon, as I said, consists of 31 chapters. So we're in July, so next month has 31 days as well. So there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. If you are trying to gain wisdom, you need to ask for wisdom, but a good start of looking at the, the wisest man that we know would be to read all of Proverbs. So take a chapter a, a day, and then you'll be done at the end of August, so, and you'll be able to study it that way, study one chapter at a time. This would be a, just a, a good journey into becoming wise. The word wisdom is found 50 times in the book of Proverbs. As you know, Proverbs is one of the five books that makes up the wisdom or poetical uh, section of the Old Testament. And the five books are Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. So becoming wise requires that we understand three things. Those three things are the meaning of wisdom, the benefits of wisdom, and the acquisition of wisdom. So we're going to look at those today. Um, if you remember uh, the sermon when I was Preaching a few weeks ago, I talked about how uh, education doesn't equal wisdom. So wisdom, it's not the same as knowledge. There's many of those that, have, that are very well educated in today's world, even have PhDs, but they're not wise at all. The Hebrew word translated wisdom means skilled intelligence or understanding how to use knowledge or information. There's a big difference between being educated and being wise. We get a great education and know not how to apply what we've learned, and it doesn't do us any good. So we'll turn to Proverbs 8.11 and see how uh, Proverbs expresses the value of wisdom. Let's go 9 through 14. So in Proverbs 8, uh, Nine, there are all plain, plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver and knowledge, rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. So, if we look in 8.11, what does the Bible say about the value of wisdom? Better than rubies. Right? Better than all the riches, uh, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So nothing is to be compared to wisdom. Wisdom is of greater value than most things. So biblical wisdom is knowing how to live wisely in a foolish world. Having discovered now the meaning of wisdom, let's look at the benefits of wisdom. There's at least five benefits that I'm going to cover this morning, but we know that there's many more, and we could be here for months uh, much less hours if we sit here and talk about all the benefits of wisdom. But we'll talk about a few that are definitely uh, prominent that should help us out in today's world. So wisdom protects against deception. Every generation has more than its share of con artists and people who are trying to take advantage of others. Have you ever turned on the TV 
first thing in the morning and you kind of see the infomercials of the latest greatest pill that's going to help you lose weight or I don't know like a, a new Bowflex style machine that apparently on its own can make you be the buffest most in shape person you don't even really got to use it past the first week because that's what we do anyway um, but so you, what my point is commercial after commercial or the emails that you receive mass mailings in your uh, post office box or your mailbox uh, we get like three things a week now but uh, that's cool too so anyway they invite us of taking advantage of the latest like money making schemes or like I was saying, the, the workout equipment or the new popular pill or some precious metal that you can buy into now and it's going to make you a fortune in the future. Wisdom can protect you against this deception. Let's see what Proverbs tells us uh, about wisdom in this case, in Proverbs 2.12. Ms. Sharon, am I going too fast? Okay. So in Proverbs 2:12, the Bible says, "To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things." So again, it's going to deliver you from wisdom will deliver you and protect you against that deception. So first benefit of wisdom, protect you from deception. Let's look at how wisdom produces a healthy life. So we talked about those companies that advertise the things that are going to make you healthy or make you fit. Um, they're some of the most profitable companies. I mean, if you look at the pharmaceutical companies and the exercise-related equipment, very profitable um, businesses in our country, and they're all health-related. Uh, you've heard Pastor talk about this uh, time and time again, about how much money we as a culture spend to try to make our life longer. Um, diet programs, etc. So back to the example of the early morning television, it's all the paid programming. Paid programming means they're spending a lot of money to get you in. So we've tied it to deception, but now let's look at Proverbs 3. We'll start in probably 14 and go to 18 and, and see what Proverbs say about living a healthy life. So. Proverbs 3:14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. We'll stop there. Did anybody see anything that kind of sounded familiar to something we've already read? What is it saying here that wisdom is? Right, back to the riches. So we started in 14 where it says uh, it's better than the merchandise of silver, the gain thereof than fine gold. Again, it's almost repeated verbatim as Proverbs 8, 11 where it says, she is more precious than rubies, and all the things Kent's desire are not to be compared unto her. So, if it's if the Bible's repeating over and over the same saying, we should hold on to that. And then it goes on to say the the length of the days is in her right hand. So, if you have wisdom, it can help you in a healthy life. Living with, uh, wisely removes a lot of stress from our life. That in and of itself is going to help you live longer. Stress as we all know, can cause a plethora of problems. Um, maybe it's why my back hurts, I don't know. So, um, but, so it's going to remove stresses. You're going to probably make better decisions about your finances, which is going to, again, cause you less stress. Uh, you're going to make better decisions and not make bad decisions in relationships, jobs, etc. Also, if we are wise, we're going to avoid many accidents that foolish people have. We won't do unwise things. This one was funny. So, again, I told you I kind of used uh, Brother Hegel's outline. And one of the examples he uses of an unwise person is they're going to saw a limb off of a tree while sitting on it. Um, 
So, I mean, I, it's kind of a, a funny example, but I mean, in all reality, those that are unwise do make poor decisions, um, myself included. So it is, we have to become wise the way that the Bible describes biblical wisdom, not the world's wisdom. Again, education doesn't equal wisdom. You're also going to make healthier habits, and the Bible says that our body is a temple. We should, we should respect our body, the body that the Lord gave us. So that includes diet, exercise, and your lifestyle. So there's many more principles we could dive into about diet and gluttony, etc. I ate like one and a half uh, cinnamon rolls this morning. Probably not the best thing for breakfast, but it sure was delicious at the time. Um, so now we'll talk, we've talked about wisdom protects us against deception and wisdom produces a healthy life. So let's talk now about wisdom promoting financial success. Not that that's something we should be seeking, but again, those that are unwise often make poor financial decisions. You think about the offerings in the mail again, a lot of those are what? What offers do you get in the mail? Just shout out some. Credit cards, I heard. So yeah, credit cards. So uh, I'm not standing up here and saying don't have credit cards, um, but just make wise decisions. So credit cards oftentimes are not one of the wisest, but um, what I'm getting at, unwise people do not make good decisions with personal finances. So as wealthy people, you're, you probably heard the saying that making money is easy, but keeping it's the hard part. So you think about the credit card, you, you spend it, because you know you're going to get paid, right? And then you, you pay your credit card. But maybe you don't pay it off, hoping you're paying it off. And then now that hundreds of dollars is racking up to thousands of dollars. And then you find yourself paying hundreds of dollars just to keep your balance exactly where it is because of the interest. So let's look to Proverbs in the Bible and see what uh, Proverbs 17:16 says. So if you'll turn with me to Proverbs 17. All right, so 17.16 says, Wherefore is there a price in the hand of, of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? Basically, it's saying fools can collect money for schooling, but without a genuine desire for wisdom, the money goes to waste. So it's back to the worldly saying of it's money, making the money is easy. Uh, as long as you put in the work, but keeping it's the hard part. So we've talked about wisdom protecting against deception producing a healthy life, promoting financial success. Let's talk about paving the way for peace. So people, again, are always stressed out. We're, we're, not, a, uh, we're not excluded from that. But that's because we, or those that don't have wisdom, continually make bad decisions. So we're here in Proverbs. So let's turn to 3, verse 17. And while you're turning, we'll kind of talk about the finances again. So, um, have you ever seen somebody come into money? Um, let's say somebody hits the lottery. You hear about it all the time. And do people generally take the installments over time? No, but they're generally told to because when you have that money and you're unwise with it, you end up being broke in a few years, right? I mean, how many times have we heard that over and over again? Or if you've seen someone receive a life insurance check. So, again, don't, don't make the unwise decisions. Seek the Bible for the biblical wisdom that you need. I don't hear pages turning, so now we'll read 3, um, 17. So, we, we've already read it. We kind of talked about it a little bit. But it says, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. So wisdom, wise people are peacemakers who try to bring peace in every situation. It says it right here again, her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. So a wise person is seeking the peace. We're going to turn and see this truth also in the New Testament. So if you'll turn with me to James 3:17.
So when I used to teach uh, youth Sunday school, I loved showing the, the teenagers how the ties from the Old Testament to the New Testament, because oftentimes you hear, you know, you don't got to abide by the Old Testament. Now it's just the New Testament. The New Testament's there for a reason. It's false doctrine. You believe in the whole Bible. God gave us the Bible. But it is great to see the ties between the Old Testament and New Testament. So here in James 3, verse number 17. Actually, yeah, we'll start at 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then what, church? Peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in what? Peace. Peace of them that make peace. So you can see that wisdom paves the way to peace. Now let's look how wisdom provides happiness. This sums up what wisdom is all about. No matter what you have or what you accomplish, without wisdom, nothing's going to make you happy. We've talked about being unwise. You make a lot more decisions that, well, are unwise and therefore result in stress, etc. If you're having a lot of stress in your life, you're probably not happy. So to enjoy all the good things we have in life, we must remember the truth that's found in the Bible. So let's turn to Proverbs. You should be, well, no, we were in James last. So Proverbs 3.13. So I told you we're going Kings, First Kings, Proverbs, and James. So keep your... Uh, Keep your hand in James, because we're going to go back there in a minute. But turn back with me to Proverbs 3.13. I'm still here in pages. So um, I thought about assigning out verses so we didn't have the awkwardness in between the um, flipping. But I know that we're all good Baptists, so nobody really wants to speak up or participate. So I figured that probably wasn't the best idea. So are we there now? Proverbs 3, 13. All right. What's it say? Want to see anybody? Want to, what's the first word? Happy. Happy. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. So, I mean, a lot of the Bible, I don't know for you, uh, but for me, sometimes I'm like, what does that really mean? I mean, this is a pretty clear verse, so even a guy like me, public education from North Carolina, I think where I can get that one pretty easy. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. So you can see just right up front that wisdom produces blessedness or happiness because it reminds us from whom all our blessings come. The word translated happy here refers to the happiness that comes from knowing God has bestowed his favor or blessing on us. The wisdom that produces happiness remembers what fact found in James 1.17. So I told you we'd be back in James. I hope you kept your finger there. If you did, you did better than me. I did not. Um, so I'll be turning with you. One seventeen. Yes, ma'am. So in James... 1, verse number 17, the Bible says, Every good gift and every per perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So fame or fortune can't really make you happy unless you understand that that is a result of God's favor in your own life. So we've talked about becoming wise this morning and the meaning of wisdom and the benefits of wisdom. Now let's look at the acquisition of wisdom. We're going to do this through what Brother Hegel calls the AAA process. So we'll start with acquiring reverence for God. So let's now flip back again to Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 10, and see what the Bible says about acquiring reverence from God. Proverbs 9:10. So it says in Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, 
and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So you acquire reverence for God. The Hebrew word translated fear means reverence. The word reverence means an attitude of deep respect. When we respect people, we value their advice and take them seriously. Can you all think about someone that you respect right now? That's the person you're going to go to when you have a question, right? Um, hopefully it is a godly person so that you're receiving what the Bible says and they're able to steer you in that direction. But if there's someone that you don't respect, you're probably not listening to them as much. Um, I mean, everybody probably had somebody just pop into their mind. Uh, I know that I did. I'm not saying that that's the right thing, but I'm just saying I think we all have somebody. So we respect people. We value their advice. We kind of have a little bit of reverence to that person. But think of our Almighty Father, the reverence that we should have. Again, the Bible says fear. So the beginning of wisdom is taking God and His Word, the Bible that we hold in our hands, seriously. So that's the first part. Now let's talk about asking God, the second A. The only real source of wisdom is God. We should know that at this point through this lesson. And the Bible tells us, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. That's Proverbs 2, 6. The problem isn't that the Lord doesn't want to give us wisdom. The problem is we don't ask for wisdom. So how is the acquisition of wisdom explained in James 1, 5? So you can turn to James 1, 5 while you're turning there. Um, so the men in the church, if you were here on Father's Day, you received uh, the book Proving Ground written by our pastor. Um, pastor dedicates a whole chapter to this in his uh, book on, on this verse and so I was sitting at the ER on Wednesday I told y'all this right And um, but I was reading that book and so it was funny funny I don't believe in coincidences I believe that God provi providentially puts us in places uh, and so I'm reading this and then pastor calls me yesterday and asked me to bring Sunday school and now this is the, the lesson that was put in front of me. So, I mean, call it what you will. I may not be the most eloquent speaker, but uh, it definitely, I was led by the Lord here. And that's how I see it. Now you know my story, why I feel that I was led by the Lord here. So, in James 1, verse number uh, 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. It's pretty clear, right? And then it says that God giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. So the verb translated ask is in present tense. So that it doesn't mean you just ask one time for wisdom, and then you're just going to be granted all of the wisdom that you ever need for your whole life in the one ask. No, it's present tense. So it means you must continuous, continuously ask for wisdom. It's not a one-time request lifetime action of continuing to ask, relying on the Lord. If we consistently ask God for wisdom, we're going to avoid many mistakes, much pain, and a lot of grief. Um, my stepfather, uh, a lot of times when he's facing a decision, I'll hear, uh, you know, when we're just praying over supper or something, he'll still ask, hey, Lord, grant me wisdom in this decision that I need to make or something. And I mean, that's great to see that others are asking very publicly for wisdom in those decisions. We oftentimes think we can handle everything on our own. Um, that hopefully is not our mindset. We need to rely on the Lord's wisdom and ask God consistently for that wisdom to help us through those decisions. And then the third A in the AAA process is apply God's Word. So wisdom isn't just reading the truths in the book of Proverbs or the rest of the Bible. It's remembering them and putting them to practice. So we should hide the word into our heart. The Bible says that. Um, so how does Proverbs 17, 24 describe the principle of applying God's word? That way. Proverbs 17, 24.
All right. So in chapter 17, verse number 24, wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bear him. So intelligence people keep their eyes fixed on wisdom, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth, so they never find wisdom. That's what the Bible says. To keep our eyes fixed on wisdom, we must remain focused on the Word of God, which contains the wisdom of God. This requires personal Bible study, faithful attending worship, group Bible studies, making sure that you're constant in your prayer and asking the Lord for wisdom. So becoming wise, today we talked about the meaning of wisdom, the benefits of wisdom, and we went over a few. Wisdom protecting you against deception, wisdom producing a healthy life, promoting financial success, paving the way to peace, wisdom providing happiness, and then the acquisition of wisdom through the AAA process, Thinking, Brother Higgles, a baseball fan. Um, acquire reverence for God, ask God, and apply God's word. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this time just in the, the Sunday school hour, Lord. Lord, I hope that your message was brought clearly, Lord. Lord, that uh, we all understand the necessity, Lord, to come to you for wisdom and not to seek the world's wisdom, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful for this study, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the uh, opportunity again to bring your message. Lord, I thank you for God and directing me. Lord, I thank you for this church. So grateful for all the members here, Lord. Lord, and just the group of believers that I'm surrounded by, Lord, and that you've put me here to be around. Lord, I'm thankful to have the uh, youth camp here, Lord. And Lord, the blessing that I know that they're going to be in our lives this morning as they sing. And then his brother uh, brings the message, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you again for this time in the Sunday school hour. I pray that you just continue to bless the rest of the day in your house as we continue to worship and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all I have for you this morning. Um, I hope that it was a blessing. And uh, next time I will try to have something more original. But I do recommend the Journey Into series. It's great for your daily study. Um, I can give you the link to the website. You can go check it out. Um, a lot of good material out there. And definitely helped me in my study, uh, my daily, daily devotion, more of a daily study because it definitely dives deeper than a, a typical standard devotion. So thank you for coming out this morning. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in service.